Lovely Floss Tube friends, welcome back to my channel, warm warm welcomes to you all. I am working on Cricut Collection Winter, I thought I would do a little stitch with me, you know, just to make sure we got a video up. I am stitching it on Chromatic Alchemy Tempest 28 Count Lugana. Um, this is a similar fabric to what I was using for my Winter uh, Mirabilia Winter White Centre. This is the non-opalescent fabric which does make it a little bit easier to see the holes now you'll notice or it would have become rather aware all of a sudden that I'm sitting here chatting and you can't hear any other movement that is because you know how much I struggle with the stitch and talk at the same time without waffling or rambling or don't even actually know what I said do you know that's terrible isn't it I get to the end of a video when I've done a stitch with me and I'm like, what did I say? What did I even talk about? Because I'm so busy stitching and trying to concentrate on what I'm doing and try and have something to say that, yeah. And then when I listen back to it, I'm like, oh dear God, <laughs> what was you rambling on about this time? <laughs> so the fact that time has been against me massively um, and the house just doesn't seem to be quiet with all the people that it's been almost impossible to be able to do any type of recording where, yeah, where I can just sit and stitch and record and not get interrupted or, or any of that lovely stuff by my gorgeous family. So I thought, you know what, I think I might have come up with a better way of doing this. One, it alleviates some of the rambling. I'm not saying for one minute that I'm not going to ramble through this. But at least I'm actually paying some attention to what I'm saying whilst I'm saying it. <laughs> so I've decided that I would sit and do my stitching, which is what I was doing. So what you're looking at now is me stitching. I've got a TV on in the background with hubby watching one television. I'm in my study and I've got floss tube on. And there's all sorts of banging and crashing going around in the kitchen where the kids are out there. But you can't hear any of that. You have just the tranquility of me chitter-chattering away to you here. Because I'm doing a voiceover. <laughs> it was the only way to do it. Because I, I do have time to do a spot of stitching. But never to actually stitch and record me talking at the same time. Unless, of course, you wanted to hear all of that other stuff going on. Which I'm sure you didn't want to hear. So... I thought, you know what, this is going to be the best way to do it because that way I can just sit and stitch. The family can be as noisy as they like. I still get some stitching done and then all I've got to do is pick my opportunity, which is what I'm doing right now, where it is mm, about quarter past nine at night, hubby's at work, kids are in their room, dog settled down because he's had his dinner. And I can just sit here and watch my own video back, which I have to do to part of the editing process anyway, and talk to you about either what I'm doing or what I'm not doing at the moment, because I'm obviously sorting some floss out as we speak. Um, but yeah, this, this was the best option I could come up with. So you have to let me know whether you think this is either any better or do you prefer to hear the racket going on in the background and and me faffing about and saying hold on a minute just let me count or oh dear where am I <laughs> because that does tend to happen a lot <laughs> so as you can see I've not really stitched very much on on my winter um all the plans of you know having a finish before winter was over so that I could actually you know have a fully finished object and have it hanging up it's yeah that that's not happening people <laughs> because I haven't even managed to get the snowman done and it's white what is it with me and white? I absolutely detest stitching white so I thought well I don't want to just sit there and just stitch white because that would be extremely boring for you so I thought well rather than go downwards I would try and go upwards and see if we could get up further to his face. Just so that you had some other colour to look at other than white. So, yeah. So, 
I was still struggling with the fabric on this one to see what I was doing whilst I was recording. But that's my own stupid fault because really I should have had the camera over to the right hand side. See, hindsight is a wonderful thing. And I only find these things out when I actually watch these videos back and I'm like, do you know what? Trees are either the lights on the wrong side or the camera's on the wrong side and you got your big fat hand in the way. <laughs> so, so this is all a bit trial and error. But I have this new this new special, special little arm that goes over the top of my stitching now. Um that I've been recording from from my desk because it's a little bit more stable. But I'm still working with the setup. So, you know, note to self for next time, the fact that I am, well, I'm right-handed, so I always have my right hand underneath my project. So I need to make sure that because my big fat left hand is on the top, I need to make sure that the camera is on the right hand side <laughs> so that my big hand doesn't get in the way and it doesn't then sort of, you know, mask the, the light as well because I've got a little light over the top to try and make it so that you could see. So, so yeah, see, the rambling's already beginning. So one of the things that I have noticed is, you know, that whole stitching white, it, there's a controversy about, you know, people and stitching either, you know, the white thread that it doesn't matter it seems to matter whether i've used anchor or dmc white is white and unfortunately white always looks really messy whenever i stitch it it's just a thing which i think is the reason why i absolutely hate stitching white admittedly on this one it is just the snowman so at least i've just got to get him done and then it's not so bad but the stitches that you can see there are, that are white i've just stitched as normal and no matter how much I think they might look okay, a lot of people always say, Teresa, why don't you railroad? Railroad your stitches. And then that way, you know, that everything will lay better and it, it won't look quite so messy. So I decided that we would give that a go and that I would try the whole railroading technique whilst I'm stitching the white to see whether what they said was true. Because white is just one of those threads that it just doesn't matter how careful I am. It it never lays as well as any of the other colours. It always looks scrappy and scruffy and yeah, it just it it never looks as good as I think it should. So I decided that I would try laying the first leg down normally and just do the whole row. And then on the second leg coming back, I would try railroading to see whether it did actually make any difference. Now, disclaimer, disclaimer, people, <laughs> this is just me, you know, so I think everyone's got a different personal preference and everyone's got a different way of stitching and a different style of stitching. For me personally, I was like, well, you know, I really don't like my white stitches when they're not railroaded. So I thought I would try the whole railroading approach and see whether it did actually make it look any better or at least for the threads to look like they're laying flatter. Because at first I thought it was just that you could see through them. You know, like if you look at them, you can you can see some of the grey of my fabric through those stitches. So I was thinking, well, maybe maybe it'll just make the stitches look a bit puffier because everything's sort of sat exactly as it should be. So I thought, well, you know, there's no better time than now since as I'm actually stitching more white to give this a go and see what I make of railroading. Now, I don't know, maybe if I railroaded a different colour against it, I would see a different but I've got to be honest, whilst I'm sitting here stitching this and looking at it with the railroading, I really don't think it made any difference <laughs> whatsoever. And it's not even that it doesn't make a difference. I think they actually look more uneven and more scruffy than the ones that I haven't railroaded, <laughs> which is scruffy enough. 
I mean, who who wants scruffy stitching? Certainly not me. But for some bizarre reason, whenever I stitch white, they always look messy. And I think that was the reason that I really didn't get on with Frosty Forest. Because Frosty Forest was basically white. I would say it was so much more white than anything else. And every time I looked at it, it was either that the stitches looked slightly dirty. I don't know. Maybe it was against the fabric that I was using. When it didn't look dirty, they didn't look like even stitches. None of my stitches looked like they were even. And they just looked messy. You know, I mean, maybe it's because because white is so reflective that you can you can see every lump, every bump. Which in my stitching, I don't want to see lumps and bumps. I want to see lovely little crosses and nothing else. <laughs> but I thought, you know, so many people do it. And so many people have sort of said that it, it can really make a difference to the stitches of how the stitches lay. Um, that I thought, well, I'd give it a go. But whilst I'm actually sitting here doing this, yeah... I was just like, I'm, I'm really not, I'm really not feeling it. And it's not even that it's because it takes a little bit longer to sort of, you know, get in between the stitches on the way back. Because that bit doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm not really about stitching as fast as humanly possible. But I was thought maybe I could get it to, you know, to make the white stitches look better than they do. As you can see, I'm actually in the middle of struggling to just get the stitches in the right place because I can't work out where the holes are because my big fat left hand is <laughs> blocking the light. So that little shadow that keeps going over, that's that's the reason because, uh, yeah, I've, I, I honestly, I need to wear my mag eyes all the time these days. It's just, <laughs> I can't see a thing ever. Unless, unless I'm working on like 25 count. If I work on 25 count, I'm fine. But 28 count, and I must admit, although in this video it sort of looks like the light's okay, I've got a massive great big bright light over the side, sort of leaning over my stitching, which is why you can see the shadow of my hand. And the shadow of my hand was blocking my own view. So, yeah, I just, I need to, I need to work out the, the recording set up so that you know so I can actually see and stitch at the same time because that's always helpful let me just have a sip of my coffee whilst I'm sitting here just talking to myself I mean this is literal talking to myself but as you can see well I don't know I'll take I'll take any comments that you give me but if you look at this stitching when I look at the white bit underneath the red bit, which has not been railroaded, that is just straight cross stitching. I haven't been particularly careful about how my threads are, whether they've crossed. And then the bit that I'm actually trying to pay some attention to and, and you know, separate the threads to make sure that they're not crossing, I actually think that looks more scruffy at the top than the bit at the bottom. The bit at the bottom in this video it doesn't actually look as bad now <laughs> now that I'm looking at it but yeah see what I mean now even I'm like even whilst I'm sort of like you know looking at it now I'm like that doesn't look very good so I think I've come to the conclusion that railroading white for me seems to have made zero difference as far as making it look better if anything it's arguable that it actually makes it look worse, in my opinion. <laughs> so I think it's about now that I decide, you know what, I don't like the railroaded section. So I think this is where I just sort of go back to the way I was, I think. <laughs> because it was just like, no, 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 that doesn't even look, that looks even worse than it looked to start with. And I'm like, how can it even look any worse than it already did? <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. It's been, it's been a hell of a week, people. Well, I say a hell of a week. It's, it's actually been, oh, there's, there's been lots that's happened. 
Um, what to tell you? Let's stop talking about my stitching for a minute and talk about life. Um, so it was hubby's birthday yesterday, of which it was like lockdown birthday. So nothing exciting happened there for him. But I did buy him a new RC car because he loves his little RC racing. Um, so he got a new truck for Chris for his birthday. So he spent the entire day yesterday with his car and all of its bits spread out all over my dining room table with RC racing on the TV um, and started building his car. But it was literally RC, RC, RC. There was just loads of RC, which, you know, if you're into that, then I'm sure it's, you know, out of this world exciting. But for me, it was like, God, this is boring. I was like, can't we put floss? Do you know what? This is what makes me laugh. Even though it was his birthday, I let him put his RC on. I'll guarantee you, if it was my birthday and I said, I want to sit there and watch floss tube, he'd be like, I'm not sitting there watching your floss tube with you. <laughs> so yeah, so anyway, it was it was a subdued affair. Um, we got a bit of a takeaway, but you know, we didn't really do much, but he got to do what he wanted for the day. So that's all that, all that matters. Um, today we found out about the unlocking of the UK and how it was going to work. I mean, it, nothing's happening speedily. There's the, you know, it's not like he sort of said, okay, as of like Monday, we're unlocking. We've still got sort of a good six week wait before sort of we really see any major changes in, in, in the unlocking of the UK. But, you know, there is, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and the fact that we've gone this long, I'm like, you know, a few more weeks. What does it matter? And to be honest, oh, I can't really say that there's been much that has bothered me about not being... I mean, if anything, I would say the only thing that is that I do miss is being able to either, you know, have Darren's family round or have, you know, my brother and his kids come round to see my mum. Um I'm not really a going out shoppy type person anyway, apart from maybe to the garden centre. I do miss the garden centre, I must say. Um, but that's only been like this week because we had like, we, we went from like, the, the weather has just been bizarre. We went from having really, really cold weather, like snow and, you know, minus three, minus four, to this weekend, we was like 17 degrees which was like heavenly. I was out mowing my lawn on Saturday in a pair of jog pants and a t-shirt. That's right, you heard me right, a t-shirt. And it's like, it's it's sort of, I don't know, it's like spring out there. I was just like, oh, this is glorious. <laughs> to mow the lawn for starters, just because that's always a good sign for me. When I feel the need that the lawn is, you know, it started to show signs of growing, I have to say, at, at that point, I'm like, oh, oh, garden's waking up. Time for Teresa to wake up. So yeah, so it it was um, it was nice to sort of be out in the garden for the weekend. So I did spend quite a lot of my time on Saturday and some of Sunday um, out in the garden. So I did the lawn mowing on Saturday and pruned back some bits and pieces, which was a desperate need. But the sun was out. Mum came in the garden. She was pruning back some of the roses, like the rose trees um, and the climbers. And even she was like, it's actually quite nice out here. When when the sun's on you, she said, it's, it's really quite warm. So I was like, yeah, I know. Isn't it lovely? And then because, you know, I was like looking around the garden because it's been really quite dead out there. And all of a sudden it's like, you know, my snowdrops have started to come out. Um, my reniculatus are out um what else are out my crocuses are out you know and when you they're only they're only tiny little flowers but when they come out it's like oh look there's some color and I can see all of like the tulips and um and the daffodils all, all of that starting like all the greenery is now starting to emerge out of the ground so so there was me thinking that everything had died because we had the wettest winter ever it wasn't particularly cold for most of it, but it was really, really wet. And obviously tulips specifically do not like lots and lots of wet. So I was starting to think, you know what, if it carries on raining the way it is, I'm not going to have any tulips because they're all rotted away underground. But the fact that there's some foliage 
foliage people there's some foliage coming out of the ground is a good thing because that means that they're still alive <laughs> so fingers crossed if the weather carries on as it is um yeah there will be some gardening action which I mean, I've been quite desperate to get in the garden and do a bit of gardening. One, if nothing else, just to sort of keep me sort of physically active. Because this whole lockdown thing, other than doing my little bit of, you know, my little bit of exercise that I do and walk the dog, I'm not really moving at all. I mean, all day I sit at this desk, you know, working. And for the entire day, other than sort of, you know, get get up and grab a coffee or you know, pop down to mum and make sure mum's okay at lunchtime, I can sit here all day and barely move. Which you would think, well, that's no different to when you're working anyway. But it is. I mean, when normally, you know, by the time I've got up, got myself sorted out, get to the station, you know, run round to the bus, get on the train, power walk through the city to get to the office. And then when you're in the office, it's up and down all the time, you know, going downstairs, then back upstairs pop out, go and get some lunch, grab a coffee. There's lots of running running around that I do that I didn't really realise I was doing until I wasn't doing it. <laughs> so, so yeah, that plus the fact that obviously the fridge is just steps away, which is another bad thing. Because normally I'm quite I'm quite good, you know, I, I don't, I don't find myself diving into the fridge very often, apart from sort of like, what am I having for dinner? But since I've been at home, I have found that I'm finding it very easy to just be like, I wouldn't say I'm bored, because I'm not bored. It's not boredom. But it obviously is boredom of some description, because, or I'm just like, hmm, you know, grab a coffee, and then I'm like, oh, what can I have with my coffee? <laughs> <laughs> which is not doing my waistline any good whatsoever. By the time summer gets here, I'm never going to be able to fit into any of my shorts. So I'm trying to behave myself. You know, it's it's Monday today. So I'm like, you know what? The diet starts today. I say diet, diet in a loose sense of the words. I just need to stop eating chocolate, crispies and biscuits is what I need to stop. Other than that, diet's fine. So... So yeah, so I've, I'm trying to be as active as I can be. So the whole thought of being able to sort of get out in the garden and, you know, do a spot of weeding and digging and, and just physically move around a bit more through the course of a day is, is, a, is a nice thought. And the fact that, you know, I actually could turn the heating off on Saturday and Sunday and leave the back door open and not freeze to death was lovely. So... So yeah, Saturday I was in the garden, did some gardening with mum. And then Sunday morning, because I'm, I'm an early bird, you know, I'm up by five. Even though I don't have to be up at five. I don't know, my body clock has swung to a whole new, a new thing. I mean, ever since I've worked in the city, you have to be up at five to get ready for work. And I just don't seem to be able to switch that off. I mean, I've been working from home permanently now for over a year. And I still can't stop myself waking up at between anywhere between five and six a.m. I never get past six. So, cause I'm 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 like that. But it doesn't matter whether it's Saturday or Sunday. I'm still up with the lark. So, the fact that the weather was so mild and so lovely, I was like, well, I think it's about time I started firing my dahlias off in the greenhouse, so that I can get some cuttings. So that's exactly what I did on Sunday morning. A so Sunday morning, I got my little heated propagator all built back up and I bedded down all of my dahlia tubers that have been overwintered in the greenhouse and put them on a little bit of bottom heat so give it two or three weeks and I should get some nice strikes so that I can start getting some cuttings off my dahlias and I've got some I've ordered some new dahlias as well so hopefully my new dahlias will turn up between the end of whether well, they're dispatching the end of February beginning of March so I'll be able to have some some new dahlias um, in the garden this year as well. So, but it was lovely. It was lovely to just be outside and get a breath of fresh air, be physically active without actually having to do exercise. It was just physical. Just to be physical was nice. So yeah, so that that was the weekend. And the fact that the weather seems to have sort of turned, that it's just not ice cold now, because I don't go outside when it's cold. I don't do outside cold. 
So I thought, you know, it's perfect opportunity to sort of get outside whilst it's mild. And to be honest, I mean, even today, today it's really quite mild. So I went down to the greenhouse and cracked the door open. But it, it's not as nice as it was on the weekend. But, you know, I, I do accept that it's still very wintry stroke spring. But yeah, that whole spring thing, you know, the spring in your step type thing. I'm so feeling that because it's like, oh, at last. At last, I'm seeing some colour in the garden, which always puts a smile on my face. But the fact that we might be unlocking now, or, well, I say unlocking now. So that I think they've said, I've got to try and work out what he said now. I think we've still got about six weeks before, you know, the hairdressers open or, you know, some of the retails or retail outlets start opening, like the non-essential. Um, so, yeah, so uh, we've still got a little ways to go before we get there. But the fact that, you know, being able to go to the hairdressers, I mean, he said, you know, the hair salons, now shops, all of those sorts of things should be open. Um, you'll be allowed, um, I think it was two families or a total of six people in people you know outside um in gardens and you know sat chatting that will be that will be allowed but like I say it's sort of six or seven weeks away yet so but it's definitely something to look forward to and the fact that the weather's just turned as well it's like yeah yeah we're ready for that now so although <laughs> I don't want people bombarding me just because all of a sudden we all unlock and it's oh yeah you know I just foresee this thing where, you know, just because we're unlocked, that means people just can just come and knock in. Because I've quite liked just sort of, you know, have a little chat on the phone, but not have to sort of entertain. But obviously, I know that for a lot of people, it's really been quite tough. So, so I'm sure that they're really looking forward to sort of being able to socialise. But yeah, I've, I've quite liked the whole socialising on my own terms, I think I call it. <laughs> But as you can see, I'm now, what are we doing? We are, yeah, so we've done some eyes. And we've got a little bit of a face appearing. At least we've stepped away from a bit of the white. God, white just goes on forever, doesn't it? But do you see what I mean about the white? The white is, where I've railroaded, you can see that it's 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 no better if anything, I, I argue that it actually looks worse. It actually looks worse with the railroaded section. And would you believe it that I'm coming to the end of the video and there's me sitting there telling you that I've picked my moment perfectly to be able to sit and do this voiceover whilst I do my stitching and I've just heard the key in the door which means my husband is home so even when I thought that there would be you know an element of time of maybe 30 minutes where it would be peace and quiet for me to do this recording and I'm sure you just heard the door slam that will be husband arriving home which means that my time's up for my stitching <laughs> So maybe I'll just put some music on for this bit so that you don't have to listen to it. Yeah, he's definitely home, people. You've ruined my recording, my love. You've appeared. So I've just shut the door because I'm close to finishing the bit that I was going to do. And I'm like, no, he can wait. He can be quiet and he can wait just for a short space of time for me to finish this video. But I must admit, being able to just sit and stitch and then do the talking afterwards seems to be a little bit easier. Purely because I can stitch, you know, as and when I've got a bit of time, which... At the moment, in today's world, it's almost impossible to sit and stitch and talk to you at the same time because either people are in bed. If they're not in bed, then they're up, which is, that's not even an option. 
to try and do a video and talk to you whilst there's people in my house. It's the only downside with open plan. Open plan, there is no, yeah, there's no quiet place. And to be honest, even even if I was to try that, it would still not be quiet because my husband has the television on 100 decibels. <laughs> and the kids, well, I say kids, they're 21 and 23. They're, they're not kids. But they are, they are noisy. They are really noisy. But yeah, it's just, it's not even feasible to be able to try and do this or do any type of recording when there's people in my house. I don't know. Once I do my conversion, then maybe, you know, I might be able to go up to the upstairs bedroom and record from there. Maybe that will be a bit more peaceful and quiet, but we need to build that first <laughs> before we get there. So... But look, at last, there's a slightly different colour. So that's, see that, that is his face. I know it looks a bit wonky and a bit weird, but that is how it's charted. I assure you, I have not gone wrong here. And look, you even get to see the messy back as well. And my big hand. My hand looks oversized in this, in this video. <laughs> so I apologise. <laughs> This is work in progress, people. It's work in progress and I, I, I'm going to find a way to do this recording so that there's no shadows and that my big fat hand doesn't get in the way of all the stitching. But I don't think we did too bad. See? Look. Look how much I got done. We got we got some of his face. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm quite happy with that. And it was quite nice to just be able to sit here, stitch, and then talk over afterwards. So you have to let me know whether you think that it's okay to do it this way. So until next time, people, I thank you for listening to me waffle as always. And bye-bye for now.